thank you, Emily, and thanks to the C.M. Russell Museum and the Russell event for inviting us to present here today. Michael DeShaman called and said, you know, as the film is getting developed, we want to have a special event at the Russell. We thought perhaps that would be the premiere of the film at one time, and this is a look at what is coming in September. So I, I hope that you will enjoy being able to see some of the treatments that we're using to uh, share Russell's story. We realize that there's an enormous amount of trust placed in us from people who Charlie means everything to. Uh, so we, we take that trust um, dearly. And I want to start out with a, a question to Brian Dippy who, for so much of his life and, and career, has um, studied Russell and held him close. And I'd like you to uh, let us know what was it about our approach or Paul uh, that led you to trust us with the story that's so close to you. Thanks, William. Is this on? Is it OK? I apologize a little bit ahead of time for a slightly uh, cold voice, but uh, so, so be it. Uh, Paul approached me to be involved in what would be really the first Russell documentary that I'm aware of made since about 1983. And I don't think there had ever been one that showed on national television. There were segments uh, in West uh, of the Imagination on Russell. And that was a series out of Dallas PBS years ago. Uh, there had been a little segment in a Salt Lake PBS uh, documentary, but nothing directly on Russell. And the scope of, and the ambition of this documentary is instantly uh, amazing. It was going to be, I'm not sure Paul said at the time, a three-hour documentary in Montana and nationally probably show an hour of it. Uh, but just trying to put together something about, I think, a neglected artist who isn't really uh, appreciated nationally in the way that he might be. Most Russell works are in Western museums. Uh, between the Rockies and the Mississippi River. And we want to get a, an impact out of this show that I think Paul, and then I met Gus subsequently, are going to be able to deliver. Three hours on Charles M. Russell is, on the one hand, a lot of coverage, and on the other hand, just a fraction of what Paul turned up through heavy, heavy research, contacts. I think this is going to be an amazing show. But I have to be honest, John and I haven't seen it. So we're giving you, as Emily said, the future tense. Uh, we're going to watch it with you, parts of it, this morning. Uh, back when I was a young kid, uh, I started out looking at Russell prints and maybe collecting a Russell print, you know. And it, it, what I seen in those prints, it just grew on me. And uh, uh, it went from down here to way up there, you know. It just somehow I just got it in, inside of me at a really young age. And it just blossomed from there. Yeah, and I, I think that in, even in the clips that you'll see today, Jim has that immediate connection to the landscape and his ability to articulate that is just really beautiful. So we're really happy to have that kind of connection, uh, almost a, a physical connection to the, to the landscape in the piece. John, in 1994 you published the biography and you've gone on to other things since. So when you were contacted about this, what was the first thing that went through your mind about remembering having Russell in your head for a while? Well, it's sort of like going on Facebook and having your old high school girlfriend contact. 
<laughs> Very good. <laughs> you get like. <laughs> uh, so Charlie Russell was, uh, I had left a career in magazine journalism, uh, moved to Montana for half the year. And uh, because I had a old, old, my oldest friend, my college roommate was from Montana and we had a copy of Trails Plowed Under in, in our college room and he would always say things like, meat's not meat till it's in the pan and all these <laughs> Russellisms. So when I came to Montana uh, and I was trying to go to the next phase of my um, speckled professional life. And um, I came to Montana and I realized very quickly that Charles Russell belonged to every, he belonged to nobody, but he belonged to everybody in Montana. The buffalo skull on the, down in the corner of the Montana license plate. Everybody in Montana knew Charlie Russell. You didn't have, to, you said, Charlie Russell and everybody go, yes, I have a story. As a writer, as a historian, as a biographer, that is a tremendous energy. It's hard to find um, that as a, as a subject. So really what my, my quest was to explain what the, what the source of this was, who was the person behind this the legend, the true story, and why he was so beloved, and what was the spark that created this. And then it was stories like Jim's that drew you in because of the, the, the passion that was coming out of the people who felt that Russell, they had their own Russell. Everybody had a slightly different one, but they all had their own Russell that I wanted to get, um, get my hands on. Paul, what has this experience been like for you? I mean, you, you I'm sure, living in Montana, you're certainly aware of Russell. Now you're, you were just cited as a resource for Russell scholars in the future. So. It's been a dual journey for me. Um, when we started on this project, the first thing I had to do is, is figure out Russell's biography. Um, but at the same time, I had to educate myself. And uh, it, it required a lot. I went out, I basically, this gave me the opportunity to get a Russell education. And I got, found the best people in the world to teach me. And I was just thinking about this last night. The one thing that I'd forgotten about when we began this project um, is we started off as a, it, it, it was going to be a biography of Russell. And immediately, the thing that struck me is what's, what was important to Charlie. I thought we had to make it bigger um, in the sense that what mattered to Charlie was Montana and the West. So, it seems like a little thing, but we changed the title. I added, it was C.M. Russell, and then we added, and the American West, because that's what he cared about. That's who he is, and that's why we are here. So, Gus, where did you find all the cowboy pictures? Where did I find all the cowboy pictures? Oh, Range Riders Museum, the uh, Britzman Archives at the... Uh, 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 Gilcrease, uh, University of Montana Archives. What were you looking for? Uh, what was I looking for? Cowboys, you know, it's like any documentary from 100 years ago. When the guy with the camera shows up, everybody just stands there and doesn't smile and, and poses. And I was trying to get away from that and actually show cowboys in action, uh, falling off a horse. And, eating breakfast, so I, I just look for, for cowboys in action, simple as that.